Yeah, in person, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very important. I really, really appreciate you taking yeah. the talk. I just downloaded the uh, the plat and the uh, what else was that? The plat and the uh, you know the monument that you guys have there for Milton and the other guys that was in during the Korean War. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely glad that you're not on there. Yeah, really. You know, you. Yeah. <laughs> so I have your, I have your book here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's your book. Mm -hmm. And I just thought it might be best if you just start out telling me who you are and where you live. Anything you want to share about yourself that would connect you with with Milton. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, as you know, my name is Curtis Morrow. That's uh, Curtis C U R T I S Morrow. Last name is Morrow, M O R R O W. And uh, I'm a Korean War veteran. And I, uh, I joined the service in 1950. Matter of fact, my birthday was the 27th of March. And on April the 6th, I was being sworn in. So, you know, it was anxious to go, you know, just just for the adventures and, you know, things like that. You know, just the way young people, young men thought back, you know, back in those days. You know. And, uh, and, you know, I don't know what else to cover on that, you know, that we, uh, that you think I should cover. No, that's perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you went to basic training. And then you were shipped to North Korea. No, not North Korea. In fact, after basic training, I took further training at uh, Fort Belvoir, Virginia. That was a little before the war started. And uh, I went to an engineering school there, which, <laughs> of all things, booby trapping, you know, engineering for demolition training. And uh, fortunately, I, I, as I look back, I didn't finish it, and uh, because the war started, you know, in Korea, it wasn't called a war, it was called uh, a police action, and uh, mm -hmm. so I volunteered to go there. We felt, in fact, the whole school, just about two-thirds of the school volunteered because we felt it would be a chance, good time, good chance, to, a uh, good way to get overseas, you know, and uh, you know, we, you know, we wanted an adventure, you know, and uh, so we were sent to Korea. I arrived in Korea uh, December the 4th, uh, 1950. That was in the midst, the middle of the war. That was shortly after the Chinese had entered the war on, you know, on the side in support of the uh, North Korean. And uh, that was my that's my first day in. It was like, uh, it was something that you couldn't even imagine, you know. Yeah. December the 4th, 1950. Right. And, and from there, Incheon, we uh, proceeded up north, which was, uh, I joined my outfit, the 24th Infantry Regiment, at uh, Pongyang, in fact, the capital of North Korea. But the United Nations forces were being pushed, were being pulled back, were being pushed back, in other words, yeah. Yeah, so it was, uh, it was, it was in dead in the winter, about 25 to 35 below zero. Wow. And uh, at that time, Milton was, was my squad leader. And, uh, when you arrived, when I arrived, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, so, do you have any memory of first meeting him? I mean, I know it's a long time ago. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. When I first met him, well, you know, he came to pick up the uh, the replacements, and then from there, you know, the truck dropped us off at a certain point and took on loaded, you know, GIs that was retreating from the north. And we were probably about a half a mile from the position, from my, from the 24th Infantry position. And uh, 
So he was the one of the, one of the people who came to pick us up and guide us to our new uh, unit, which was the 24th Infantry Regiment. So, uh, and that was the first time, you know, we met. And then I was assigned to his squad. There were six of us in number. And I think it was three of us went to the first, the first platoon. And uh, I was assigned, I went to the, no, to the first, yeah, the first platoon. And I was assigned to his squad, which was the uh, first squad of the first platoon. First squad, first platoon. Yeah, that was it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was the very first day that you arrived, you met him then? But the very first day, the first hour. If in there, well, it wasn't probably about three or four hours after. I don't know how long the truck ride was, you know. What was he like as a person? What do you remember of him like as a person? Yeah, he was a lack of a guy. You know, he was uh, he was he wasn't a goof off type. He was the real serious military type guy. He was the one the sort of guys that would what I learned later that would that you know plan to make a career of the military. So he conducted himself in that way, you know. So he was a leader. He was actually a leader that we respect. You know, because you have to gain respect. You know, officers and <laughs> those in charge has to gain respect of his men, um, you know, that's following him. And right away he, uh, you know, he was, you, you know, we had his, he had our attention, you know, in other words. Yeah. So he was in charge of six guys? Well, the full squad, is the strength is 12, as I recall. And uh, we had about eight members because, you know, the others had been wounded. Uh, because they had retreated. They was in full retreat, the whole unit front. <laughs> and so, uh, and our unit at the time was put in a a blocking position, you know, that's to sort of hold back the, the North Koreans and Chinese, mostly Chinese back then, and, uh, you know, while the remaining could pull back, you know, for, to be reorganized, and the medical, you know, the ones that need medical attention. Yeah. So that was in December when you met him. He was killed in July, July 17th, 1951. Right. So you were together from December 4th through the date that he died. Right. Mm -hmm. Every day. And then you remember, um, you shared with me a little bit of information about you were the point man at that time, and he was the person at the rear of the group? Yeah, well, you know, the squad, I think we probably had about 10 men in the squad at that time, you know. And uh, so as squad leader, I was the assistant squad leader, I guess, in, in you know, duties where So he was, uh, I was point. And so he was actually about eight to nine men behind me as we were going up the ridge. You know. So of course, everyone was in view. You know. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I have a tickle in my throat. Uh, yeah. <coughs> it's hot here. Oh, it's hot here. It's about 90s here. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. So you were, you were, um, you had gone in to do something with the Chinese, you said at the time. You had gone in, you had been going in to do something with the Chinese. No. And I'm right back out. No, we was on patrol. We were on patrol, you know, you do patrol maybe four or five times a week, you know, different uh, units in your outfit, you know, you go on patrol, it's a continuous thing. That's to find out, the, to try to, you know, find out the location of your enemy. Right. And once you make contact, then you really your their position back or your position back, and you pull back. So it was just a routine patrol. And usually when you make contact, it's, it's like a fire fight, you know, because they don't want you to come too close, you know, and usually uh, 
in some cases, I understand they let the point man pass if they want to ambush the whole unit. But this was, we were just, we were on a, we were on a, on a squad patrol, which is like 10, 12 men. So, uh, in fact, I just, at that, during that time, I probably, I had a sense of, you know, your sixth sense kick in. It's like intuition. So you feel that there's something, you know, out of place. Uh, you know, by then, I had been on the front for, what, three or four months then, since, so I, I, actually, five months. So I was really, uh, I was uh, what they call a seasoned <laughs> comeback soldier. So we yeah, I was, I was, I was into it. I was, that was my complete focus, and uh, so I just, when I sense something is unusual, uh, like I feel somebody is there or something, I would fire off a couple of shots, and if they were there, usually they would return fire because they would think that I have discovered them. You get it? So that's yeah. what I did. So when I fired off a couple of shots on that day. There was incoming fire. Now, automatically, everyone knows that that's when you get out of there. Right. Especially now if you're on a patrol. But if you're on a mission to take the position, the enemy position, you know, you keep going if you're on the defensive. Yeah. So uh, I yelled. Well, I didn't have to yell. I just, when I popped off a couple of shots, the other guys knew. And so, uh, you know, they automatically pulled back to the base of the hill that we were walking, you know, that we were going up. And uh, Because you were on patrol. You weren't on a mission, you were on patrol. We were on patrol, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I pulled back, after firing a couple of shots, I, the last I saw of Bailey was, he was... He was actually, it looked like, I don't know, but he was finding his weapon, you know. And I thought he was right behind me because I, I recall hearing him get out, pull out, pull back. All right, let's, you know. And uh, so I just assumed that he was, we left the, the ridge line at the same time. You know what I mean, ridge line, right? Going up the ridge over here, yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. So you want to get off the ridge. Yeah. You and were coming down from the mountain ridge. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you jump, you know, because you, you have to roll down a bit because you're going down slope, the slope of the ridge, of the hill, or mountain, whichever way it was. And at the base of the hill is when you organize, you know. And so he wasn't among us. So we, you know, you get spread out, you get scattered out, and uh, those that we made, uh, we had to recross a rice paddy in order to pull, you know, probably about 50 yards to the other side, you know, and that's where we, that was our rallying point. And uh, actually, it was there that we really knew our position. So from there, we proceeded to our unit. And that's when we discovered that he wasn't, that he was missing, you know. And everyone else was there. Yeah, everyone else was there. I think we got one wound. Yeah, we got one wounded, which was, you, I, I don't know if it was a very, it wasn't a stateside wound, you know. So that means they patch you up and send you back up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So you realize that he was missing, and then what happens when that, if you don't have a person from your unit, what do you do? Well, you report it, missing, you know, there's one missing in action. We didn't know whether he was killed or what. So you go down as a missing in action. And what was the last time that you saw him? Did you tell me that you saw him reaching into his shirt? Yeah, it looked like, but he could have been holding his weapon, you know, firing. You know, like, I'm falling at the same time, right? So it was just like a split second thing. So it wasn't, it just, the it, only thing I know he was in a position where you would be in if you was firing your weapon. You know, I guess. You weren't, yeah, you weren't watching him. You just glanced and thought you saw him. Yeah, right. I just, firing a weapon or doing something on that ridge. Yeah. Where was the ridge? 
I don't get. I don't understand your question. Where Where was this location where he was? I have no idea. You know, it was just on a hill. Uh, uh, my, uh, in South Korea or North Korea? Oh yeah, Korea? it was. That was in South Korea. Yeah. Okay, because he's listed as missing in North Korea for some reason. It could have been. It could have been because see, as a soldier, you know, we're not. We knew that there was a 38 parallel. But the right. 38 parallel was, wasn't as famous as it is after, you know, when he started doing the uh, peace negotiation. That was when we just, you know, we, the 38 parallel became, uh, you know, fixed in our mind because that was where the peace negotiation, you know, peace talk was negotiated, you know, right? At Paramujan, which happened to sit on the 38 parallel. So we were back and forth. You know, we go, we would, on the offense, we would proceed north of the 38th, and the Chinese and, well, North Korea, Chinese, mostly Chinese, they would push us back, and then we would push them back, so it was like a push-back thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, more than likely, yeah, yeah, so we were in, that, that was more than likely, it was in the north, north of the 38th parallel. It wasn't, you know, I don't know how far north.